Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about multicam proxy editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. First of all, thanks to Verdun Luck, who uh, contacted me and asked me about how to do this. So I went in and had a look at the best way to create proxies and create in a, in a multicam source sequence. And the difficulty is that um, what Verdun wanted to do was have an HD main sequence, but put in 4K or Ultra HD media inside it and be able to pan and scan and move around. Because in this example, he's shooting with seven cameras, uh, but he can be shooting up to 10 different cameras and not all, them, all, not all of them are Ultra HD. And I, I want to clarify that. I want to make sure that I stop saying 4K when I mean Ultra HD because it makes a difference. 4K is 4,096 pixels wide and Ultra HD is 3840. The difference there is Ultra HD and HD fit together in 16 by 9 in a sequence really nicely. 4K, you actually have to tweak it a little bit because if you resize it as 16 by 9, you end up with black bars. So this is Ultra HD and HD footage together. Let's go have a look at, at uh, what I did here. So there you could see a zoom in on the larger Ultra HD because there's so much resolution when you blow that frame, when you, when you move out like a wide angle shot, it doesn't lose any resolution when you zoom in. And you might also have noticed the word proxy on some of them. So of the seven cameras, three of these cameras are Ultra HD, so I had to create proxies. And one of the things you can do when you're creating a proxy, and by the way, I have a tutorial about proxies, you can add an overlay, a, a graphic overlay, just to remind yourself if you're in proxy mode or not. And I'll show you that real quick. So I've, I've got a proxy setting here that if I open up, of course you can set your audio and video settings, but in the effects, there's an image overlay and I have a Photoshop file and this could be a JPEG or a ping file that just basically says proxy and you can set where that is in the image and what is the size uh, that you're using. So that's what you see um, in the bottom of, of all of those frames. When it's generating the proxies for those three cameras, it's writing that word. Um, okay, and then the rest are just HD together. So let's start by stripping this all back to nothing. I'm going to go over to my media and delete that completely. I'm going to open up the media folder, and in here we've got, I'm just going to make this larger, there are the seven cameras and three Zoom audio recordings. The audio from the cameras themselves are not good enough for the final, but the Zoom audio recordings are very good. I'm gonna select this one. You notice the resolution of this one here. I'm gonna select that one, add the shift key, and then select this one, and right click, and choose create multicam source sequence. I'm gonna name this multicam original, and I'm gonna sync this using the audio. The rest of these settings, I'm going to leave the same, click OK. Now, some people might get confused with the word time code. They seem time coded in their cameras and they think, well, don't all my cameras have time code and can't they use that to sync? And the answer is no. To truly do real sync of time code, you need a master generator of time code 
on set when you're recording. And each of the cameras need to be connected to that time code. They're a slave to the master time code. Jam sync is what it's called. Now I'm gonna put a link for a little product called Tentacle Sync. I've never used it, but it is an inexpensive way to get that. But we don't need that here. We're just using audio to sync that together. Now you'll see the Multicam Original is also 3840. Because I clicked on the, the Ultra HD clip first and then selected the rest of them, Premiere Pro is going to make a source sequence based on that larger setting. There's no number in the create uh, source sequence that you can change that. You'll notice that we also have HD footage in here in amongst all of the Ultra HD. Typically, when you double click on a, a source sequence, when you open up the source sequence, it opens up in the source monitor. And you may be alarmed to see the four HD cameras look too small. Don't worry. Stay with me here, don't worry. If you right click on that same source, multicam source, you can open it in the timeline instead. So over here on the right hand side, we now have so on the right hand side, we now have all of our cameras together. And you can see that the drums are at the top and each subsequent clip is below it with our larger Ultra HD at the bottom. So even though these are, ultra, these are HD in an Ultra HD clip, don't worry about it. Now I need to make a sequence to put that in. So I'll create a new sequence. And for this, I'm going to use 25 frames for, per second because that's the original media. And I'll call this Multicam Master HD. Now when I drag the Multicam source sequence in here, go over to my wrench and turn on multi-camera. You'll notice all the frames are, all the HD frames are the right size. So even though the multi-cam source is ultra HD with a smaller HD, by the time you get over here, it fills the frame. The three Ultra HD cameras are larger, and that's the idea here, is that we can scale them up and down. So let's have a look. Up at the top, I've got the three larger Ultra HD shots, and then my HD shots here. If, they're in a, if you want them in a different order, you can click on the wrench, edit cameras, and actually drag and drop and change the order of these. So if you wanted one different, you could get that. So now that I have my, uh, my clips in that order, I'm going to record my multicam switching. Now I can't do this at full resolution. I'll try this at a quarter resolution. And I'll make sure my proxies are on. Like I said, I've got a tutorial about how to create a proxy workflow. So I'm gonna start with this shot here. And as soon as I hit play, I can either click up here in the top or press the numbers on the top of my QWERTY keyboard uh, from one to seven to go through the cameras, or I could actually stop and hold the control key on Windows, command on Mac, and click on a camera and force it to go to that camera and cut the video. I'm just gonna do it live because I can always tweak that. So I'll hit play.
All right, so you can see down at the bottom, there are my edits. So if we zoom in here and look at these, so there's our first shot. That's the HD shot. This is the Ultra HD shot, and it's it's zoomed in. We've got a few options in here. So I can click on this, and if I want to just quickly jump to a wide shot, let me zoom in a bit more, right click, and choose not scale, but set to frame size, and it zooms out, and this is where we can see proxy. But now we've got a wider shot. That's an HD shot, HD. HD. So let's make our hero shot here a little bit better. Let's go to the effects controls and we'll start zoomed out. In fact, let's right click and choose set to frame size. So we'll go back to 50%, set a keyframe for position and for scale, move ahead. and change the scale and the position. So we're gonna zoom in to him. And on these keyframes on the right, I'll select them and ease in. So now let's look at a couple shots before and then the trumpet solo. It's that easy. Let's do one more. So we, let's go to the other ultra HD shot. And how about we start on the conductor, position and scale, move out. Let's set this to 50% and reset our position. So clicking on this button resets the position back to the original and 50%. This is the equivalent of right clicking on here and choosing set to frame size. So now we've got this. You see that reveal. So we're gonna push into him. Now let's pull out. Now, a couple of other things I wanna show you. Because we're in multicam mode and because we're syncing this to music, this has a specific uh, uh, challenge and that is cutting and moving cut points between different cameras. Because you have one piece on the timeline, if you want to change your edit, you can't just, well, you can freely grab a clip and move it, but then it's completely out of sync. The roll edit tool is your friend. Let me show you this. So in our tools over here, here's the rolling edit tool. And if I wanted, let's say that I wanted to go to him a little bit sooner. Your first thought might be to drag this over and drag that over. But if you've got the rolling edit tool, it does both of those for you. So you're clicking and dragging that edit point you're moving all of the cameras at once. Now, the last thing that I would do is once I finish my multicam edit like this, I would duplicate it and flatten another version just to make it like a normal sequence. I'll show you what that's like. So over here, we've got, here's our multicam master. I'll right click on that and duplicate it. And I'll call this multicam flat. And when I open that up, it's the exact same. But if I select everything, right click and choose multi camera flatten, you'll notice the color will change and it now is broken up into a bunch of normal clips. And we don't need our multicam view anymore. This is a, a regular composite view. But this is essentially just a regular edit with a bunch of clips. You're going to miss all this, the syncing parts of things, but if you wanted to move this now, if the multicam part was locked 
and you're now just tweaking, you're adding graphics on top of this before you export, this might be a way to work that you like. So instead of staying in the, in the multicam view, you're in this view and you've got it out. So there you go. For now, thank you very much. We worked together on this. Uh, it, was, it was actually quite fun. I was surprised at learning some of these things myself. I was alarmed the very first time I saw that source sequence and I saw the HD frames were smaller, but the final output looks fantastic. The HD stays HD in the HD, even though it came from an Ultra HD multicam source sequence. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you follow this, hopefully you can get creative. I've got a tutorial, I'll put this at the end of uh, Pan and Scan, the, the uh, uh, Ken Burns effect in 4K, which I think fits perfectly in this at the same time. All right, if you found this informative and if you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. If you wanna support us some more, we're making it much, much easier now, strictly through PayPal. PayPal is really easy because it's a one click on the front page and you can use a PayPal account or a credit card or even a debit card and support us for a one-time payment or you can have a recurring payment as little as a dollar a month. All of it means a lot to us. We really do appreciate your support. So thanks a lot to Verdun Luck and thanks to uh, everyone else for your support. My name is Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.